Hey, my beautifully broken people. I told you guys yesterday we were going to continue to talk about Little Malia today. I'm going to go over Britney's timeline, Vince's timeline, the media's timeline, and the internet's timeline of events. And we're going to ask some questions. We're also going to include a couple of clips from a few other YouTubers who are covering this story. I mean... Really, really good, you guys. So I want you guys to go check them out. Um, okay, with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, let's quickly go over Britney's timeline. She says that on April 30th, she left to go to the airport. Before she went to the airport, Vince took her son and Malia to daycare. She says on 5-1, on May 1st, she attended her father's funeral on... 5-3, she comes back. She waits at the airport for two hours. Vince does not pick her up, so she calls her mother, and her mother comes to pick her up. On 5-3, she went to the police station. She tried to report Malia missing, and she said that police told her she could not report Malia missing because Malia was with her stepfather. She says that on 5-4, she went to the police station again to fill out more paperwork. And that's when police noticed that Vince was in the hospital and they put out an Amber Alert for Malia. There's no records that say the police told her when she went to go file the police report, the police told her that she couldn't file a missing persons report because Malia was with the stepfather and if you guys aren't aware you don't always necessarily have to wait 24 out 24 hours excuse me to report someone missing now the issues I have with her timeline is the mother is never actually seen leaving the apartment at all on um April 30th now, we know, according to police, she got on that flight. Q is also saying there is footage of that. We have not saw that. Um, but let's just say she got on that plane. Is there exits or another door to the apartment complex that complex, excuse me, that doesn't have a camera near there where she could have gotten out? And the reason what makes me think that as well is because she claims that. So when he brought her back to the house, Brittany claims that she didn't even know Malia was in the house. Now He has to answer for that because there's a lot more here. His mother had no idea that this child was leaving the house with him in the morning. He's saying, I'm taking the child to daycare. But only later to learn from the investigation from both HPD and us that he was bringing the child back home sometimes with him. Now, there were a few things that Brittany left out of her timeline. Things like they got into a fight before she left. She stayed with him after Malia went missing at her mother's house. And she says that when her mother went to go pick her up and drop her off at the apartment, she tried banging on the door, trying to get in, and the the dining room light was on, and she didn't have no keys. Let's, let's go back <clears throat> to the beginning of this story. Um, you left town to go to your dad's memorial service. It's been reported you had an argument with Darian Vince before you left town. What was that about? I'll speak to that. Okay, I'll speak to that. I'll speak to that. They were having some relationship issues because she discovered that there was issues of infidelity and that he had been entertaining others in a very inappropriate manner when you're in a committed relationship with someone else. And so 
She didn't confront him about that until she was already gone at the airport. So at the airport, did you call him and talk to him about this? Or he, he took you to the airport? No, my friend took me to the airport. And did you call him? No, I texted him. What did you say? Those text messages have been given to authorities. And so we don't want to rehash that right now mm -hmm. because all of that's going to come out in a trial someday soon. But all of that exchange between the two of them about the infidelity, the inappropriate pictures of a sexual nature that she had discovered him sending to someone else, um, that's going to come up. But all of that was provided after I got involved mm -hmm. to investigators that they needed to see those things. Mm -hmm. Because to me, I believe it spoke to motive, in my opinion, based on what we have learned and what we discovered and what we saw. Those pictures had the potential to expose a hidden secret of his about his sexuality. You came back May 3rd, I believe. So how much longer was Darian there? Because at, one, at some point, police couldn't find him. Was he there for another two days, another three days? Do you remember? I don't understand that question. But my, my question is, at some point, police said they could, they tried to find him. So at some point, he obviously left the apartment. Was it after you'd been home for two or three days? When, when they first released him on that Sunday? I'm sorry. Before I, he was even arrested. Before he was, okay, on the yeah. third. No, he was supposed to be picking me up on the third. Right. And he never showed up. I waited for him for two hours. Who picked you up at the airport? My mother. And what did she tell you? Did she give you a reason why he wasn't there? No, but she told me that if he were to make it there, then just to ride with him. I see. But he never made it. But he never made it. Did you go to your apartment that night? I sure did. And was he there? No. The car wasn't there, nobody was answering the door, and the light was still on in the uh, dining area. So when did you see him? I seen him Sunday. Okay, so that was the next day? Friday was, I mean, the third was Friday. Okay. Yeah, and then we filed the missing persons report that Saturday. Okay. He didn't come into the hospital until later on that night. That night. And the police didn't release him until that Sunday. Did you go to the hospital to see him? We got a phone call. I received a phone call. His brothers received a phone call, and my mom received a phone call saying that they were there. And so we all went there, and there were a lot of police officers. Uh-huh. Did you have a chance to talk to him then? No. They wouldn't let us. They wouldn't let you talk to him? No. <clears throat> did he ever come back to the apartment after that? No. Where did he go? He went on Sunday, he came back to my mother's house. To your mother's house? Yes. So why did he not come back to the apartment with you? I didn't go to the apartment. Oh, okay. So I you... went back to with my mother. I didn't... <clears throat> so you were both staying with your mom? Yes. Yeah. Okay. A port, that's, a port that's left out here, she did go to the apartment. Straight from the airport, went to the apartment, and he didn't pick her up. Wouldn't answer the phone. Wouldn't care. This is a man you loved. This is a man you had a child with. Did you think he was ever capable of doing any harm to any of your children? No. Never because thought that. Because that's, that's not what I've seen. Okay, you guys, so I'm sitting here. This is me from the future. Hi. <laughs> I'm sitting here, and um, I just noticed something while I'm editing. So remember I did a video, most of y'all didn't see it, probably none of y'all. I did a video of a little girl named Iviona, and I just noticed, like, connections. So Iviona, she was killed by her mother's boyfriend. So right before Iviona was murdered... Her mother had wrote her boyfriend a letter saying that she was going to leave him if he didn't get his act together. Aviona's mother claimed she was locked out the house, so she went to her brother's house. She claimed that when she came back, 
Ivy on was missing. And Chaz didn't know where she was at. The baby was missing for 48 hours before she filed a police report. And she said it was because, oh, there was some confusion on who was supposed to be taking care of the baby. <sighs> and there's a lot more in each of these little girl st stories. I was telling y'all, and I hope it doesn't sound like, well, I don't even give a damn if it sounds crazy. Like, it's facts. There are some similar things in these cases, and it's ridiculous. And I noticed that most of the, the little girls die um, between March, April, and May. Brittany, why would your mother say if he comes, just go with him? She was coming to pick you up, right? So are you trying to say she was already coming to get you and while en route she was... She was just going to take the chance of coming to pick you up? I'm confused. Why did you stay with him at your mother's house after normally it was missing? And I also wanted to know, like, what when she was with him that night, what did he say? What did she ask him? And here's what she had to say. When you got back, he explains what happens. What else did he tell you? When I saw him, when he home, when, when you got home, when I got home that yes. Sunday, yes, he never really said anything to me. He just kept saying, "I'm sorry." He said he was sorry. I'm sorry. Did he I try to protect her. That's all he told me. He didn't really tell me much. The same things that I heard going around us. He didn't tell me anything. So. Did you have suspicions? Brittany, this man comes home and tells you your child has been kidnapped. Okay? Kidnapped. Gone. And at the time, your son was with him as well. He was knocked out supposedly for four, more than 24 hours. And all he could tell you is, I'm sorry? You allowed him to just tell you, I'm sorry. I don't believe that. I'd asked you earlier about Malia's birthday, February 6th. Um, tell me about the day she was born. The day she was born. Um, I had to have a C-section with her. And I just remember being in the hospital by myself. Mm. Other family members not there or wow. Wow. Do you remember holding her for the first time? Absolutely. And what was that like? Just the feeling was amazing because I've always wanted a little girl. I've always wanted a little girl and to know that I finally had her. When asked about something or someone you love unconditionally, all you could do is talk about yourself and say you were alone. Girl, how? Malia was right there, healthy, innocent, alive, and she didn't ask to be brought there. But I know for a fact you made some choices and decisions that landed you in that hospital room by yourself. Some unmotherly decisions like getting your kids taken away from you or allowing your child to be abused Malia went to the hospital to the emergency room three times before her death probably even more than that but it wasn't a little cut scrape cough the first time she went she had a seizure and a head wound she had, she had to get half of her skull removed because of pressure on her brain. July 10th, Brittany took her to the hospital saying she was throwing up blood. But the doctor said that she was extremely lethargic. July 28th, she had a quote-unquote small cut on her, forehead, on her um, head, her forehead. Doctors say that that caused blood 
to be on the outside of her brain, which is life-threatening. But the mother said she fell from the chair. This is a man you loved. This is a man you had a child with. Did you think he was ever capable of doing any harm to any of your children? That's not what I think. So, <clears throat> I, I want to ask you something, because you, you have brought this up in interviews, and this is a touchy subject. Um, you have said in interviews that there was abuse in the home, and Brittany was afraid to reveal it because she was afraid. I didn't realize that the basket was gone until I, I heard about it, until I spoke with the detectives. And when I went home and I noticed the basket was gone, and I don't know, I just, I don't know. I know that my mother had done laundry on the first and he picked it up. Maybe it was there, I don't know, mm. you know. But are you, there's something going on between you two where you, you're not you're not talking, which seems surprising given what you're going through. You'd want to talk to your mom. I want to talk to mom. It's too much for her. Brittany, which one is it? Did you notice the basket before the police told you or not? Did he abuse your child or not? Why is your mother no longer speaking to you? And if you weren't answering his phone calls, how did you know he go to your mother went to your mother's house to get laundry on the first? Were you talking to your mother and not your children? The family of Malia's father, the Davis family, says you knew what was going on in the home and you failed to protect your daughter. You can't answer that. No, that goes to the CPS. Would you not have placed them with other family members? Your mother, an aunt? My aunt doesn't live here. What about the Davis family? The Davis family, I mean, Peyton went. Malia could have went too. And why didn't she? They should have asked for her. I didn't even know that they wanted to come get paid. Family, Craig Davis spoke with ABC 13 in his first interview since his daughter's disappearance. Investigators say four-year-old Malia has been gone since Friday. I haven't spoken to the public because I, I can't talk about my daughter with, I can't control my emotions. I can't predict myself. Butler says he wants to speak with that stepdad. I'm not putting the blame on anybody. I just need the questions that aren't answered to be answered. There are so many unanswered questions. And it's not for the public to answer them for me. It's not for police officers to answer them. Hello. Don't see me right here. Get in touch with my family, man. Y'all gotta pull up on me. Uh, I, don't, I don't really go around nobody. You know, I don't leave the house. So. Hey, look, bro. I am a. To get off. Yeah, because, you know, it's, it's, it's random people that's just doing too much. You know, I hope people I love, you know, got my message, you know. And I ain't out there searching because I know what happened. Let me get off it. Now that last, that very last clip you saw of that live, that was sourced from 54 underscore keys. That's keys with a Z at, it, at the end. Y'all know I can't talk. I'm sorry. I just wanted to give her credit. So 
I have a question for the father. He claims he went to go pick them up. My thing is now you're saying, oh, you're on the news. And it's like it's a formula to like when these girls die. I'm sorry, I'm going to rant real quick. It's like the mothers allow their boyfriends to kill their daughters. Then the fathers or family members come out the blue. Oh, whoa, me on the news when you could have protected your child. And the reason why I'm saying about saying that about this man is because they say, him and the family say that Brittany knew Malia was being abused. So how the fuck did y'all know? Because y'all knew she was being abused. And y'all did nothing. I'm at the point where I've had it. This is not my child. But like I said, if we all work together... With our children, with our youth, it will be such a better place. This shit is ridiculous. I'm so tired of this demonic formula to this. And if y'all know what I'm talking about, then y'all know what I'm talking about. Why not ask him, when you went to go pick up your son, you claim, oh, he said that Malia was sick and had the flu. So fucking what? Take your kid with you. Y'all all be sick together. Why you didn't press him then, but now since your daughter's missing, you want to press him now. And then on top of that, knowing she was abused. Because there's no way you could say the mother knew she was she was being abused without you knowing. You guys, I will no longer be addressing Brittany as Malia's mother. That's not a mother. Uh, Y'all can say I'm judging this, that. I don't care. And I'm going to leave this right here today and we'll finish off where we left off today, tomorrow. Leave your unnecessary, necessary opinions down below. Have a blessed night, safe night. Hug on your babies, please. I'll see you guys in the next one.